Debbie Rochester with All Good Home Watch, and thank you so much for being here. Today, we have John Miller, farmer florist with John's Plant Adventures located in Gilbert, Arizona. Thank you so much for being here, John. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. So I've got some questions for you. Yeah. So my first one is, how did you get into plants? Um, so I just started growing when I was little, probably around like 13 or 14 and I've always just loved being in the garden with um, my parents. Um, I went to school for horticulture. Um, I went to school or I worked at a greenhouse I should say and so I just always loved plants so I decided to grow some flowers and make it a business. So I love it. So did, were you raised in Arizona or somewhere else? So I grew up in Michigan. Um, I moved to Arizona in 2015 so I've been here almost eight years now. Very nice. And then when you were in Michigan, is that something you did then? I know that you said that you did it young, but did, did you yeah. do a business or? No. So that was all like before I was 18. So that was all for fun, basically just kind of learning and experimenting. So I love that. Yeah. So what is your favorite flower or plant? So my favorite flower is a Lysianthus. Um, they grow really well here. They um, do actually best in the summer. They love the heat and they come in all sorts of colors. So they're really pretty. I love that. I love that. All right. So what are some frequently asked questions that you get from homeowners or just people who are at uh, when they come to visit you at your place? Um, well, a lot of questions I get asked is, um, how do you grow flowers? And, you know, it's it's a tricky question because it's it's really just um, water and, you know, feeding your plants right and really just giving them that extra like protection, make, making sure they don't get like hot, hot afternoon sun. Um, so really just protecting your plants and kind of watching them, looking for signs of, you know, stress, basically. So what are some signs of stress for people to look for? Yeah, so just like burnt leaves on your plant or just like yellowing leaves could just mean you're overwatering, um, you're getting sunburned, etc. Um, and so you kind of have to just, you know, trial and error, you know, research and how to try to fix your plant. <laughs> So when I go to a lot of my clients' homes, I see that the little pipes for the irrigation is mm -hmm. like right where the plant is like um, planted in the ground. Yeah, where the trunk is. Is that where it should be or should it be a little bit away yeah. from Yeah, so initially, yes. Um, you want them right there where the trunk is so that the, the root ball basically gets wet. But as the tree grows, basically, the root ball gets bigger. So wherever the canopy of the tree lies is where the root ball is so you want to water the whole circumference of your tree once it matures oh yeah. that's great tip i love that i love that yeah yeah so i know that people did you want to add something else yeah so a lot of people you can add more drip emitters to your um to your line or just you know extend it um but what i honestly recommend is just um getting out a hose and just soaking it overnight on a really slow drip um, okay. that seems to really do the trick for people Great. And is there a better time to water early in the morning, later at night? Um, so in the summertime, when it's like kind of crucial to water your plants, um, I just water them all night. It's just on a, you can crack your hose open just a little. So it's on a trickle and just leave it there all night. Okay. So at night. Yeah. At night. Recommend. All right. Mm -hmm. And now it's getting a little bit cold here in Arizona, which is it very is. unusual for me. I'm from Illinois. And so oh, I'm yeah. here to be a little bit warmer. And so <laughs> what about the cold temperatures? When do you suggest watering? Um, so really it rains here fairly decently in the winter time. So you don't really have to water your citrus trees a whole lot. Um, if it doesn't rain, I'd say water them every three weeks or so. Um, just so that they get a nice, nice soaking. Um, I like to tell people in the springtime, um, water your trees like every other week deeply. And then in the summertime, do it every week. Um, so you kind of have to adjust your schedule based on the season. Yeah, wonderful. So you did mention some of the uh, fruit bearing trees. And so do you find that people overwater or underwater them? In the wintertime, I find that people overwater them um, just because their clocks and their irrigation timers are on the same schedule basically all year. 
Um, so I find in the winter time, it's, it's more or less overwatered. Yeah. Great. This so. is really great information. Is there anything else that I didn't ask you that you'd like to share that you might? Um, so, I mean, fruit trees in general um, are pretty easy. Um, for beginners, I definitely do recommend citrus trees. Um, also, people grow uh, peach trees as well pretty easily here and figs as well. So those are some pretty simple ones um, that I would recommend for sure. Wonderful. And yeah. so at John's Plant Adventures, tell me a little bit about that. So when they people can come visit and what kind of activities or events? Yeah, so um, I'm not a public farm, but I grow and sell flowers at um, a retail level as well as um, a wholesale level. So I uh, sell flowers on DoorDash and then I do small events and private events for um, anyone who needs flowers. Oh, wonderful. So I will put it at the end of this video also, but share how people can contact you if they're interested. Yeah, so you can reach out to me um, via um, Instagram, which is John's underscore plant underscore adventures, or um, email me at johns.plant.adventures at gmail. So, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, John, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. All right, have a great day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.